Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. I interviewed Ray Goche, and there was so much information in the the interview that we did that I'm going to break it up into a few episodes. So this week, I'm going to release uh, parts one and two of our conversation where we just talk about uh what we can do to my business, but I think it's applicable and a lot of people could uh, get a lot of value for applying it to their business as well. And then in a couple weeks or a month, I'll release the other part of the show, which is him just talking about marketing. So without further ado, here is uh, parts one and two. Welcome to another episode of A Canadian Investing in the U.S. This week, my guest is Ray Gauthier. Last month was the, the guest speaker for the Kitchen Waterloo Cambridge real estate meetup that I frequent, and I'm actually the guest speaker there this month. I missed his, I missed his whole uh, speech thing because I was down in Huntsville buying properties that same day, and so I selfishly really wanted to see it, so I got him on the show to come and talk about uh, real estate marketing and branding and uh, finding your niche and so forth. Right? I don't it, just introduce yourself. Sure. Just before I, before I do that, I just want to say I'm selfishly looking forward to your show next week <laughs> when you're there and I'll be there I'm not gonna be in Alabama or anything like that oh, excellent um, yeah I'm a, a full-time real estate investor uh, s- small we're really just getting started me and my brother we own a we own an investment company we call let's call property sense and we do multi-family residential and we focus primarily in the Kingston and the Belleville area we're the working partners and we have JV partners on the, on the money side of things. Been doing that for about six months and I'm having a ball doing it. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. My background is uh, is marketing. So my presentation at um, Doug and Anna's event was was about marketing. Yeah. How do you, how do you as someone who, who meets him for the first time, how do you define if if you want to work with this guy? You, you just can't, right? So the, you, there's no value statement of who he is and who he is. So it's it just he's that... You know, maybe that's just uh, maybe that works for him. It's also hard too when you, you talk about niching up. Yeah, like it's hard to do that because and it's because it's hard to there there are issues in defining your ideal client. Um, it can be scary. Um, it, you you could potentially be working with fewer people. So especially if you're starting out, do you want to you want to build a niche where you're actually turning people away and you're saying no? It's hard to say no if you if you need that kind of well, revenue. Think of the title of my show. I instantly push a lot of people away, which was really hard when I was coming up with the name, the Canadian Investing in the U.S. Yeah. So it's, it, but it's on real estate. So I could have had a nice general name, you know, Canadian Real Estate, right? And, or yeah. something like that and hit way more people because a lot of people are going to see the title and go, well, I, I'm not investing in the U.S., so this isn't for me. And, right? and that you've learned or you, you, you know that that's okay. That yeah. means I'm not for them, right? Yeah. That's all, that's all that means. <laughs> yeah, but still, like I, I think probably like 75% of my guests are Canadians who invest in Canadian real estate. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it it applies everywhere, right? So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have I have a real keen interest in what you, in what you do though. So, uh, so you may be mentoring me freely as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that's this. That's one of the scary things. I like with the, the name, and I still I debate even starting another one with another name, like having a second one because it it I cut a lot of people don't look yeah, at. Yeah, I would as as a marketing guy and branding guy, I would recommend against that for sure. Stay like, stay niche. Stay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, do you enjoy it? Yeah, well, that's why I still do it every week. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, so there's 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 certain weeks where I'm like. Oh man, I have to get this all edited up because I I edit this all up. It doesn't just come out like this. When when people who are listening to it, this will be nice and clean whenever they get to hear it. But it takes like uh, you know, I do an interview for half an hour, cut it down to fifteen minutes, and then I edit it for I don't know an hour or two hours just to make a single fifteen minute episode. And you and then you, you you comes across your mind all the time. You're like, well. I'm not making any money from this, and you're just like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip this week, right? I'm gonna skip this week, and then you're like, no, I have to do it every week. I need to be consistent, because if anyone ever wants to work with me, you, they want, I want them to know that I will do what needs to get done every week, and they can see it from my work ethic, from what I've done in the past, from not even getting paid. You could, you could outsource that pretty easily, right? Like for fifty, for fifteen dollars, you can just go overseas and have somebody do that, and. That's, that's what we do. That's that's yeah. 
Absolutely, we do. So. I, I I have honestly thought about that a lot. I have uh, a guy that I've had on the show and I talk to every month, and he has a virtual assistant, and he can hook me up with his whole team over overseas. But the thing is, it's like sometimes it, having them uh, – I'll probably cut all this stuff out. But having <laughs> – Don't leave it in. This is good stuff. <laughs> but having uh, you know me do it myself – I can, uh, whenever I say something dumb, I don't know if they would know to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, you're right. You need the right person that can find the relevance, right? What yeah. are the relevant pieces to keep and stuff like that? Yeah. That, the good side of niching, though, is that um, the value the value you provide is relevant to the people you want to work with as well, right? So your U.S. market stuff, it's still, it's still relevant to them. Um, it makes communication like a whole ton easier as well because they, they get you right away. And there's there's a plus too of working with fewer people because if you're trying to be everything to everybody, you're really spread thin. But if you're an expert to just the right segment of people, it's, yeah. like it's a beautiful thing and it's a lot more fun too. <laughs> yeah, it's for my website. Yeah, because I'm not really selling anything. Like, what should I be doing to, you know, what should I have on there? Like, because right now I'm getting it re rejigged. Right now I'm getting I have a. A virtual assistant over somewhere in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I've been like, just we're sort of dragging our feet, but we're we're gonna rebuild the whole thing, and it that's the thing where I'm at. Where I'm like, what should I be doing with this? Because I'm, you know, should I be finding some, like, should I be targeting to find stuff to sell? Because I've thought of lots of products that yeah. are completely real estate related, things that people need, things I've bought on Amazon that are expensive. Should I be coming up with? These products should I be starting to sell products on the site? What do you, yeah? What do you what do you want it to do? So, forget about your website for a second. What do you want your business to look like in five years? Well, I would like it to be mostly running on its own. So I'm okay. slowly building more and more systems as much as I can, and I'm going to have to bring more people in as it gets more and more complicated. But mm -hmm. I, I do outsource like everything is done through property management with my company down in the States. But it, you know, still, if you want to, you know, have freedom, right? You yeah. don't want to be doing accounting and everything else. But I, that's not really what you're asking. <laughs> well, no, well, it is a little bit what I'm asking because it doesn't sound like um, to do that, you even need a website. No, I, 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 that's the thing. Like, to, for the business I'm doing, I don't need a website and yeah. I don't need a podcast. What yeah. I do is I go down and I market with a lot of different realtors that are specific to, like, one's a multifamily person, they're the best. I find yeah. one that's, you know, my property manager and they will get me the rent comps and they will be obligated to match the rents to actually get the rents from mm -hmm. what I think. And I have, I get all these people to find me deals and I go searching myself and talk to wholesalers and everything else. And then I basically, depending on the deal, I buy it with cash and then uh, reno and refi out and you just keep doing it over and over again. And so are, there, are, there, are there things that a website could um, help you with some of those challenges? So finding wholesalers. Um, That's a good point. Yeah. Right. I, I, I don't know. It's a, it's, it's a question. I, I don't. Or even have some of the, you know, because people will, if I give them my email address, it's glenn at glennsutherland.com. And a lot of people are smart enough to know that means that there's glennsutherland.com, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so they're, you yeah. know, they're, if people are checking me out, maybe just, I'm just spitballing, like have like some of these frequently asked questions, like how, how I work with a wholesaler, what my, you know, what I'm comfortable with doing, what my things are and you know i don't know maybe yeah try and well, build a track yeah, record because people are going to try and verify you right yeah it, yeah yeah so it feels like your your website is primarily like a credibility piece right okay. you're not you're not going to try and monetize it you just want people when they land on you to to say yeah yeah okay now i know who he is and and yes i want to work with him so to me there's like there's a, it's those five questions need to be pretty prominent on your site it's who am i uh what do i do who do i work with how do i do it and why am i doing it Get make those prominent questions on your website that people can get to really quickly, and that's all you want it to do. You're not trying to sell a book. You're not yeah. trying to. You're not trying to sell coaching. You just want them to get to know you so that um, if they're if if landing on your website helps sway them in a, in a decision that that's in your favor, great. That's all it needs to do. I love it. I love <laughs> it. It's simple, but it makes so much sense, and it's it's really because I, I I keep dabbling with throwing other really junk on the site and I don't want that and I, 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I don't I don't monetize the podcast. I don't have the ads. And I found like apps that can monetize it. And I figure that's just going to cheapen everything if I start. I don't know what you, your thoughts on that. Oh, oh yeah, that that's a good question. <laughs> and it's a question a lot of people struggle with. Um, I have a really personal bias there. So yeah. a lot of people spon- they get sponsors for their podcast, right? Yeah. Um, and these are and these are people who are like really really well known and they get a lot of view, a lot of visitors and uh, listeners. Um, but the sponsorship piece is like a minute and a half, two minutes, sometimes three minutes long in the beginning of every podcast. And to me, that just exactly what you just said, that takes away that from the value so, so quickly. Yep. If yep. You need, so if you want to monetize it some way, get a sponsor, get a small ad on the side, 15, 20 seconds at the top saying this podcast is sponsored by ABC Property Rentals. Um, and, then, and then move on. Otherwise, yeah, you don't give them enough time to skip because I know certain podcasts are exactly two minutes. And you just, as soon as I just pick up my phone, hit the skip button eight times, and I, I'm, I, I'm right through it. <laughs> I do exactly. Yeah, I do the same thing. And if I don't know how long, I'll skip ahead to two minutes and three minutes. Then, okay, yeah. now, now they're actually talking. Yeah. Yeah. And so the worst ones are ones that aren't even related to real estate. They're like selling shirts as the advertisement. And you're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you need to get so many viewers or visitors to your website to have like banner ads pay off um, that it's just probably probably not worth it. Um, if you if you do want to offset some of your costs in, in podcasting by getting a, getting a sponsor, okay, do that. Yeah. But um, like one of the events that I go to, I won't say where, um, they have a lot of sponsors because it's a pretty pristine event. Um, and they used to the the sponsors used to get like five or ten minutes on stage at the beginning of all these events, and it got pretty tiresome pretty quick, right? Oh yeah, you got a bunch of them up there, yeah. Yeah, so they cut that right down. You got two minutes tops. There's three of them, maybe four of them, and then you know, you're into the event. So it's it's the same thing here. Yeah, well, you mentioned the podcast cost, and there is not a lot of costs to running this thing, and yeah. it is a great way to market yourself to meet people, and especially if you don't have an agenda, you're not selling anything, people aren't going to tune out. Like I was telling uh, Ray in our pre-talk, I had, I think, three or four people email me today just looking for advice or looking to grab a coffee or a drink. And, yeah, it, it's I love it. I'm very social, so I love to go out and have a drink or a coffee. And But I don't like coffee at night, so it's a drink at night. <laughs> 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 but... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, I, it, it's, a, it's a great way to meet people. And if you had a business that you were like, that's what you're trying to do is to JV, I think that the easiest way to do that would be just to put a podcast like this together and just give away information and find great guests like Ray to come on and share something that everyone's interested in. Oh, thanks for that. Um, the, you asked a little bit about your website, but yeah. another common question is like, where do I start, right? So I'm up there at the front of the room telling people that, uh, nobody's out there telling you how to do marketing and branding as a real estate investor. And so the, the next question is, well, what can I do now? And there's some really, really basic entry level things that I think everyone ought to do. Yeah. And uh, I see 95% of people in that room not doing. And one of them is just an email address where uh, you got to Glenn at Glenn Glenn Sutherland. GlennSutherland.com. Yeah. yeah that, that's pretty cool, right? That's a, yeah. that's, that's a good one. But um, the guy, be- so the guy beside you could be um, Bob Smith eight five four seven at gmail dot com, and and that happens like ninety percent of the time, and it costs you almost nothing to get a real to to, to buy a domain name or buy a name a business name, yeah. And get a, get an email address that makes you look professional like within yep. three seconds. <laughs> I think I pay like three dollars a month for hosting, and it was like a twenty dollars setup fee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and then you're just yeah. It, it's nothing, and uh, it deters me so many times in the states because I get private lenders, and yeah. private lenders have these Gmail addresses, and yeah. I'm never going to meet them. And frankly, it scares the crap out of me that I don't know where they are, and I'm not sure they're real because yeah. it could be a scam. That it, because it's just a Gmail address, and they're like, okay, you you wire us the setup fee, and then we'll wire you the money. Well, <laughs> I, I don't want to send it to whatever at gmail.com i'm like i'm like if i i feel way more comfortable and i almost insist on this them to have like a website and an email address in order to even start doing business with them and then i want to review to see that they're real 
but yeah, like you said, it's it, yeah, okay. We'll, it's just it's just a, just a small, easy perception thing, right? That, that costs you like thirty five dollars a year or whatever. Yeah, whatever it costs you. Uh, a business name. So if you if you want to get beyond as a real estate investor, you want to get beyond having um, just exhausting your own um, what you can qualify for and, and your your own, your own finances. Like that'll get you to like three or four houses, right? If you want to get beyond that, get a business name. <laughs> it's it's it doesn't mean you matter almost what it is, but get get a business name and get a business card. So, like I mentioned at the start of the episode, this is part one of two. Part two of two should play right after this, but if not, go track it down. It has the same name, uh, just part two of two at the end. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone.